Hey, what's up guys? I'm Harry Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 and the Fate of Iberia expansion as we're playing as Amir al Muqtadur. So in today's episode, I think we're going to have a period of peace after we had a war in both of the last two videos. You know, as a calm, humble character, I feel like, you know, we don't feel like we have to constantly, constantly be at war to expand our realm in the name of our own honor and glory. I think we're uh, going to just sit here for a little while Enjoy peace, relax. Uh, we're gonna go on a hunt here in a minute. We just fired that event before we started, or before we ended the last episode. And so yeah, I think we're just gonna have a period of peace here. And in addition, if we take any other further counties, you know, we're sitting at a total of seven if you count the two that we've already given out to our sons. You know, obviously this one will not be in the inheritance. Yeah, if you already count the two we've given out to our sons, that's a total of seven. That means four will go to our eldest son, Yusef. You know, three plus the one he already has. And three total, uh, so two additional ones, will go to our younger son, Mundur. So I think, uh, you know, if we conquer any other counties, they're just going to go to our younger son. So I think it's just good to maybe just have a period of peace. And I don't know if we'll have any more war in his lifetime. It really just depends on how long he lives, uh, how healthy he is. So yeah, let's just go ahead and let the game play here and uh, go on our hunt. So we're going to be hunting a fox. My vassal, Sheik Abda. Al Malik is the first to see it. The sly fox is hard to distinguish from its surroundings, but it is observing us through the undergrowth. I lock eyes with the animal, and it's almost as if it can sense my intention, for it suddenly takes off. Alright, so we could say slow and steady, that cliff looks steep, or we ride. Well, we're a calm character. And I kind of look at that as like you're uh, careful. That's why we played it so far. So we'll say slow and steady now, that cliff looks steep. Well, I don't know, I feel like that's almost as if you're a, a coward. It's more like a cowardly. Yeah, we'll just say we ride then, in that case. If we were our son, then that's probably what we'd do. My world narrows to the nature surrounding us as we follow the fox on its escape through a ravine. Riding side by side with the sheik, I can hear the thunder of hoofs, dogs barking, men shouting. The excitement flows through me as we slowly gain on our quarry. All right, so again, a little bit more prestige here. I know that it is a killing shot before the arrow even finds its target. As the fox stumbles and falls, we drown out its wells with shouts of victory. A good kill. Alright, so we return from the hunt and gained uh, about 300 prestige or so over the course of it. So, essentially doubled our prestige. So we have a request for a divorce here. So this is our half-brother. He's wanting a divorce from his wife. It's interesting that he asked us for permission for the divorce. Is it because we're like the head of the house? Because yeah, we're not his liege or anything. So I'm guessing that's why. Yeah, I'm actually fine with him doing this divorce. Now I know that these guys are united here. And they don't yet have a son. And so that means he, he basically is going to lose this for good. Now we are set to inherit our brother's territory. As you can see here. Uh, so if he dies... Uh, anytime soon, which, you know, his, his daughter won't be inheriting, so unless he has another son, which is what I'm assuming he's wanting to do. I guess this is why he wants the divorce. Is so that he can have a son, and then, uh, you know, we won't be the ones inheriting. So it might actually be a negative to grant him the divorce, because he'll get married to somebody younger. But we are role-playing here, and I don't see any reason why our character would say no. So yeah, we're going to go and accept his request, and I guess this will result in him marrying somebody else, and then more than likely, he'll probably be somebody young, and he'll be trying to have a son here before he dies. It would be nice if we could inherit that, but it's fine, there's other ways we can get control of it in the future. Uh, we did sway him again, we got him down to negative 15, or got him up to negative 15, still 58% chance here, so we'll keep it going for now. And we can have a friendship, start a friendship with this character here. I'm not entirely sure who he is, though. Just take a look at him. So he's over here in our neighbor's territory. He is his marshal. So while numerous attempts to curry my favor have not gone unnoticed, I cannot feel but irritated by him, his sudden interest in me. I cannot shake the feeling that the man's intentions are not here. Well, he's heterosexual, so he's probably not interested in us sexually. Yeah, we, we can still become friends with him. We can say, but he still has a certain charm. Why can he not leave me in peace? Or I never want to see his face again. It's calm purposes, and I don't think we'd say that. We gain stress if we say this one here, though, because clearly our character is uh, irritated by him. And we're an honest person, so I feel like we'd just say, why can't he not leave us in peace? 
We're not going to start a friendship that we're not uh, interested in. We're not going to lie to the man. Act like we like him when we don't. Uh, we've already gotten control up. Uh, we didn't get a notification about that, though, so... We could have been increasing control somewhere else. We've got a bunch of places where we need to increase control. Uh, let's go and work on this location next. And what the plan is, is we need to give out the titles before we die. Because I actually want our youngest son to inherit these two titles that neighbor him. When he's only set to inherit this one, instead he'll get this one over here. So yeah, I think it would be better, since these two don't neighbor, to instead give him this one. So eventually we want to give him these two. We'll hold on to them as long as we can. So we can continue to benefit from them. And this gave us some increased garrison size and control growth. Right, excellent. Uh, it's not a place in, uh, where we're having control problems. They're at full 100 right now. So we got a little bit of money. I think we're going to construct a building. We're going to make sure that uh, our armies aren't too much smaller than our neighbors. It looks like our, our armies are larger. Because uh, otherwise we don't put that into men in arms. I think we're alright. Uh, so let's go to build in the capital. Uh, we can get a new duchy building, but we don't have enough money for that just yet. So I think we're just going to get the cheaper building for now. And uh, we're going to get the hunter's grounds. It gives more tax. Uh, defender advantage here in the capital is always helpful. More levies. And we're going to get some bonuses here for light, light cab. Uh, just kind of show you what we're getting total. So that's what we're working on. Out of the uh, choices, I think that's probably the best one for us. So yeah, we'll go for that one. Alright, so our first building constructed of the series. Uh, we will probably get some more men in arms after that. Just kind of increase the numbers just a little bit. So we got a scandalous priest. This is our younger son. Which is interesting because I didn't know he was a priest. I'm not entirely sure what makes him a priest. And you know, our uh, eldest son. You know, we've got him working as our mufti. Or mufti. Well, yeah, I don't know why he would be considered a priest. But yeah, it says the world was appalled to learn that he was discovered gorging himself on a luxurious feast of roast swan, sturgeon caviar, uh, extraments, and invigorating herbal infusions. The excessive indulgence of the feast has cast a dark shadow on his legitimacy. While scandals among the clergy are nothing, nude, are nothing new, it is disquieting for one to occur so close to home. So yeah, it's, it's strange that he's being considered a priest. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, three choices here. Condemn him for his transgressions, which we would not do this. As you can see, a cynical, humble character uh, yeah, doesn't want to do this. Defend his character publicly, even at risk to myself. And this will result in us losing piety and prestige, but we'll get opinion with our son. Or maybe I should just stay silent about this, and that will also result in stress. Well, we, we know we want to do that option. We're honest, so I feel like... We've got to defend him. So we'll do that, lose the piety and the prestige, which we don't have a lot of piety to lose because we, we gain it really slow due to, our, due to our lack of wives. That's okay. We'll do that option, and uh, that'll result in us also losing some of that hard-earned prestige. Uh, a bunch of stuff happening over here on the side. We also got an event about trying to improve his opinion further. And, uh, you know, we, we're at 17 now. I imagine we just finished, yeah. And so now we're looking at a 38% chance of completion. So we're probably going to cancel this, but we can go ahead and do one more thing here to try and improve it. And this is just based on his traits, which one you think is uh, the best option for him. So he's not particularly brave, and he's not a warrior or anything. So probably want to go with courage. Soaring ambition. And he's arrogant, but not really ambitious. Clear rationality. Maybe because of the learning. It's kind of fickle though. I really can't say which option is best for him. But we'll try the clear rationality. That seems like the most likely. Since he's not ambitious, so he is arrogant. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll do this one, guys, and we'll see what he thinks. Might end up losing some opinion here. And it looks like we gained 10 opinion. All right, excellent. Uh, also, we further progressed on the swing. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to cancel this. It's only a 38% chance of success, so let's go and abandon that. And uh, I guess we can start trying to learn a language. I can look at our court one more time, make sure that there's nobody who absolutely hates us. Our marshal doesn't really like us. But I suppose that's okay. We won't, uh, won't bother boosting the opinion with them. That faction has disbanded, the Liberty faction. So I think what we're going to do is, is try and learn a language now. 
So I, I try to learn this, guys, as we've seen before. It's it's not a high chance, though it has increased by a percentage. We're at 30% now. We could instead attempt to learn the Iberian Vulgar language, uh, which you can see over here with the Christians. Castile has conquered a little bit of territory from Leon. He's also conquered all this as well, so he's looking kind of powerful. Uh, he's just a boy, though, six years old. So it might have been some inheritance that happened there as well, uh, although clearly they took this this territory from Leon. But yeah, he's a young boy here. It's going to take a while before he's of age, a good decade. But yeah, he's, he's right now probably the most powerful in all of Iberia. Hard to compare these two. He might be more powerful. You know, you can't really compare because he's just a child right now, so it's hard to say. But yeah, we could learn that language instead. I went and looked at all the characters I could find, even, you know, characters who don't rule, but characters that are in the court. And I couldn't find anybody who had a higher percentage than 30% for any of them. So I think we're just going to attempt to learn his language here with the 30%. And, you know, it's 12 years. Probably not going to succeed in this before we die. But we'll work on it. Why not? So again, we're not gonna we're not gonna learn that. Uh, but we don't really need to improve opinion any further, I think. I mean, we could, but none of these guys are all that much of a concern. So I think we'll just work on the language, and you never know. Maybe we get lucky with it. Again, it's it's fairly irrelevant. You know, we're sixty years old here, so we won't be alive that much longer. I mean, it's really hard to say actually how long this character will live. It's nothing really affecting his health. Uh, we got a dangerous faction that's going to be forming up here in five months. This is going to be another peasant rebellion we'll have to put down. Uh, also, we have a perk here. So let's go ahead and get probably this one here. Movement speed is nice too, though. Yeah, I guess we'll go with the movement speed and get over there quicker. Although, of course, we're probably going to you know, raise up our troops fairly close to their army. But yeah, that's always helpful to have in conflicts. Uh, we got that hunter's lodge constructed. Excellent. We also have a bit more money. Uh, so let's go and improve that, or we can improve this one. I think it would be better to improve this one so we get more money. So let's get that upgraded. And here's a language event, Lost in Translation. So essentially we're just trying to learn the language and we're making some mistakes, insulting somebody on accident. Uh, so we can say, I'm terribly sorry, I hope this is enough. We'll give them a bit of money and uh, we'll be extra careful. So scheme power is lower, but the success chance is higher. So it'll take longer, but we're more likely to succeed. We say, uh, or we can lie, say you misheard. I called him Serene and a star. Well, we're not going to say that, obviously, because we're uh, honest. He say, yes, I did, and he is also lo loathsome. Uh, that's against the calm and the humble. So we won't do that one. Or you can say, I'm just practice practicing my Berber. I misspoke. This is a diplomacy challenge, and we successfully we can successfully explain that it was a misunderstanding with a 67% chance. And I feel like that's what we'd probably do is attempt to explain it. I don't know how likely we are to succeed. Uh, two third chance here and it looks like it worked out. We successfully explained the misunderstanding. And yeah, we're gonna have to fight this rebellion. That's also gonna reduce control everywhere where they rebel. So we just have to keep on ticking up control. Uh, I don't know if that would be, yeah, it's here as well. So what we're going to want to do is change, well, we can't change that up because uh, we got a siege here. So we're going to need to wait. So this uh, rebellion isn't too large. Shouldn't be too difficult to put down. Uh, so let's go and get our, our troops raised up. And we're going to put them right here, even though they could technically go wipe us out if they, if they wanted to. They will not. Uh, so do we want to lead? Uh, we have this new commander here, which is that peasant leader. But is he the best option? Now he does have that trait where we'll take less casualties, so I suppose that's helpful. We have the better advantage. I feel like we're getting older. Yeah, I think we're gonna let this guy lead instead. I don't know that you let a peasant lead your troops though. I guess that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so yeah, we'll just lead our, ourselves then. We probably wouldn't give our army in charge of that peasant leader. Hasn't improved himself yet. Yeah, this should be a nice, easy, quick war here. Let's we'll destroy this army and then go wipe out those other two and then we'll be done. And uh, we'll have a period of peace for a little while until we have to fight another rebellion. Because again, as long as we have the different cultures and religions here, they're, they're going to continue to rebel. That's not going to stop. And so that's one reason why I do want to do all the conversions. 
Just so we don't have to constantly fight these little rebellions. It's just a pain in the butt. It stops the flow of the game and the series. And nothing really happens with it. It's not like they're gonna ever succeed. Uh, I guess that maybe if you're in a conflict already, then perhaps they would. Uh, but yeah, let's go and force our demands. Uh, one good thing about doing these rebellions is that you're constantly getting new peasant leaders. I suppose there's that. So we could hire this guy, Rough Terrain Expert Peasant Leader. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and negotiate his release, and we will just recruit him. So this guy got a weak hook as well. Yeah, it just kind of stops the flow of the game a little bit. Uh, we do need to put him back, increase in control. That's another problem, is that you, know, you lose the money and the levies every time you have this rebellion due to your control being reduced in all those provinces. So another reason why I kind of want to end these if we can. But yeah, we just can't get the uh, popular opinion up high enough. It's only when you pacify them. That's pretty much the only time that we don't have the rebellion issues. So yeah, I, I feel like we're going to have to to convert them. Both in culture and religion. So we don't have to deal with that the entire series. You know, if we were bigger than a, a few provinces, wouldn't it be enough for them to rebel? Uh, we got attentive care from our wife, a massive health boost, so we're likely going to live even longer. Although that seems like it only uh, that only counters penalties. That won't actually increase our lifespan unless we get uh, sick or whatever, you know, to help help us against that or or uh, injury. So here's another event with this friendship. I don't know if this is the same character. Might not be, uh, but it's the same event essentially. And so we're just going to say the same thing, be honest here. Tell them we want to be left alone. Uh, our brother died, but it looks like we did not inherit his territory. Also, his wife, well, she's not in power anymore. Yeah, I don't think this is her. But anyway, she lost that territory to our ally, the Emir here in the south. It seems that this was not the brother who died. It was one of our other brothers, this character here, which I don't know where he was at who he is, uh, but yeah, he, he's the one who, who died. Uh, seems we have a, another brother, two more other brothers, that I wasn't aware of. So this guy is the court Imon here in our, you know, other brother's territory, the oldest one. And then we got this one, and he's all the way over here. So he's still alive, and we're still set to inherit. He doesn't have a son yet. He also got a lot of uh, health problems. Fogging, hard memories. Is that because he likes to smoke the green? Reduces his stewardship and learning. But also, his stress loss is increased. Yeah, that's what it's from. Though he doesn't smoke it, he eats cakes. Okay, so he eats edibles. Alright, so he's got some memory problems now. Uh, but yeah, he's, his health is clearly ailing, and thus we'll probably inherit his territory here. But remember, that would just end up going to our other son. How far away? We, we're, we're good, so we're, we're going to live at least a while longer here. Uh, but yeah, somebody asked me last episode if we could vassalize our half-brother and his wife. I checked with both of them, and uh, it was not a possibility. And that is because of their different culture. And I think he might have also... No, he didn't convert religion, but she had a different religion. Uh, but yeah, you can see that he's clearly not willing to offer or to accept vassalage. Uh, part of that is that negative 25 because we're not his rightful liege. We're not the, the king of Aragon. I think we need two more counties in the kingdom of Aragon in order to get that title. Uh, but also that negative 35 for cultural acceptance, that's the big one. That's really what's having the, the primary effect here. Yeah, she wasn't willing to accept. She was even less willing to accept. So we could not vassalize those two. So yeah, if he dies before us, which looks like he will, there he is. He just died. Speaking of his death... So he's died, and thus we have hen inherited his title, and that's going to go to our other son here. And I feel like he's just getting far too much territory, honestly. But yeah, we can go ahead and give him these two. Or at least give him one of them to get rid of this problem here. Now, this one isn't that much greater. It does have the, the higher development, though. So yeah, we'll just grant him one of these two. Probably this one here. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this title to him. We want to try and make it so he gets these two. And as of right now, he is set to, to inherit that one, as well as the new one over here. 
So if we did conquer any territory, that would go to our eldest son now. So if we wanted to, to conquer one county from them, because I don't think we can conquer the entire thing, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have a war goal to do that. So we'd only conquer the one province, so either Navarra or uh, Nahara. So that would be our, our choices. Yeah, because we don't want to conquer that one, obviously, although it is coastal territory. We we'll want to get to there eventually. Uh, but yeah, let's go and give this guy his, his new title. This county over here. Oh, I think I was going to give him that one. It doesn't matter, because we want to give him both of those uh, eventually. So let's go ahead and take another county. Uh, we've spent a good couple years at peace here, about four years at peace. So we do need to appoint a new marshal here. And we're not going to put him in place, despite the fact that he is a, a powerful noble, or powerful vassal here. He would not be a good choice. I uh, could put one of these peasant leaders in charge as a marshal, but while I, I'll hire them and use them as generals once they've been under our service for a while, I don't know that it's good to put somebody who hates you who's a peasant leader, so I don't really know that it makes a whole lot of sense to put him in charge here. It's one thing using him as a knight, which both of these are uh, favorites, but uh, yeah, I just don't think it makes sense to make them the, the marshal, even if they are superior. Uh, so instead, we'll just put this guy in charge, even though he's... Uh, significantly worse and he did finish up with the control and it looks like we finished converting there I must have missed these notifications so we need to continue this process uh, it looks like these are all of our faith yeah we, we just converted them there and uh, our vassal has already converted here unless that was already our faith I'm not entirely sure still need to convert there though and up around here we'll do this one next I think that's the the best option uh, so it's going to convert the faith over here and we already have the, the culture still going. It's going to be done in, in two years. Uh, let's go ahead and now work on increasing control over here in this county. That should hopefully be done soon. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and conquer uh, this territory from Navarra. He doesn't have any allies. He's got a lot less troops, so it should be a fairly easy conflict. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and start that war. If we don't have anything else we need to be aware of over here. We could also attack Barcelona, characters known as the Old over there. Because still, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to make the map look weird until we've conquered Navarra. Yeah, he's got about 2,200 troops. He also has an ally, uh, but that's just a vassal. Yeah, I think it's, it's better to just go after him first since he's the easier target. Uh, so I was going to declare war on him to conquer a county. And we're going to go after Navarra here, which will split his territory. Should be unfortunate for him. We could take this one instead, but yeah, I think this one makes the most sense. It's the richest of the provinces, I believe. I uh, say so we're going to declare war for that one county. We will not need to bring anybody else in because this is going to be a nice, easy conflict here. So let's go ahead and raise them all up here. And uh, hopefully, get his, his troops engaged in battle here. It looks like he's going to flee. And again, we'll put ourselves in charge rather than the, the peasant leaders. They'll just serve as his knights. So he realized he can't leave in time. It's best to defend here in his capital where he has a defensive building bonus and the mountains. But yeah, he just doesn't have the troop numbers. So it should be a nice, easy battle. And then after that, you just do the siege. That might not be enough to win the war. Might have to uh, take another county. We'll see. At the very least, we'll have the, the ticking war score. Really just depends on how much we get from here, because that is his entire army. And our culture has joined the high medieval era. New innovations are available. Now, we are not in control of our innovations. That would be the leader over here in Yemen. You know, we are the Yemeni culture. He just has the one duchy title and the four county titles. We have five county titles. It is based on the development, I think, though. We don't even have any Yemeni culture provinces. And even if we did, his development is significantly higher over here, as you'd expect, with this being a key place of trade. Uh, you know, the trade going from the Indian Sea to the to the Red Sea here. So yeah, I feel like we probably won't get control of that anytime soon. Uh, so we won't be able to pick innovations. That's okay. So let's go ahead and uh, finish this battle. We can speed it up. And that was enough. Uh, we captured the king. Perhaps he was leading his troops there. Uh, so with that, we don't even have to do the siege. So an even easier conflict than anticipated. All right, fantastic. All right, so we've taken over his primary county here, split up his realm, and uh, 
now we're going to want to give out another title and give one out to our eldest son. But again, I really want to make sure he gets the specific titles here. Because as of right now, he's currently going to get, he's going to get this one. I don't I actually want him to get that one. I want him to get this one here and potentially this one here. So let's go ahead and move. Is this not, uh, yeah, that's got low control. Maybe it just hasn't uh, registered. So let's let it play for a second. Get to the next month. And then we'll move this guy over to here. And then we're going to be giving out these two counties to our younger son. Now we do have the duchy apparently. So now we have a dilemma here. Then unless we can get the kingdom title by attacking Aragon, then he becomes independent once he becomes uh, a duke or a mir. In addition to that, he, he's going to inherit all this. Because this is all part of that, that duchy of Navarra. So he's going to wrap all the way around here and have a total of four counties. So this is a, a problem. So I don't think we want it to work this way. The other solution, and particularly because this guy sucks, our son is not great at anything. Uh, nor does he have a, a son, so I guess that they don't have one. She's only 31 though, so she could get pregnant again. If they don't have one, then all this territory would be going to our eldest son. So I guess that's one advantage here. But yeah, we have to consider that he will have a male heir, and it won't go down that way. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure uh, how we want to to deal with this. So we might just want to grant out the duchy title to somebody else, which means you got to create it. But you can't do that until we become the king. So we're going to have to start a war uh, with Barcelona, essentially. So start a war over here, and then try and figure out what we're going to do with that. Just trying to secure our inheritance. So don't uh, lose all the work we just just did. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start a war over here. I, I don't think there's really anything we need to, to do to prepare for that. Um, you know, we have allies, so and, and we have way more troops. He has an ally as well, but that's just his vassal. Rings about 782, so I guess when you combine that, they have similar numbers. So we, we, probably, we probably want to bring one of our allies into this conflict, is what I'm thinking. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just start the war now. And, and we just need one county in order to... Uh, oops. In order to, to take that title. Uh, so with the one county, which one do we want to take? I guess I should have looked at that beforehand. Because uh, we could take any of these three. Uh, Barcelona is probably the richest one, I would assume. It's also where the duchy title is located. As far as development goes, this is clearly the, the poorest of the two. Should probably just go for Barcelona now. Even though it might look a little bit better taking this one, but yeah, that kind of splits their territory just like we did over here in Navarra. So I think we're going to go after Barcelona. It's probably the best one. So yeah, that's what the war will be over. It only costs us 34 prestige. Let's go ahead and declare war and then bring in our allies. So yeah, we're going to call our powerful ally in using the 150 prestige just to make sure this war goes nice and smooth and isn't too difficult. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the troops over here so we can get this invasion started. Raise them all here. And then maybe we'll get lucky and uh, capture the king again early on here. I don't know if he's actually leading his troops. Uh, yes, Duke Ramon is leading his own troops here. Now, you can see he actually has 3,000 dudes here. Oh, we're not even done assembling yet. So we're not moving anywhere yet. So we're, we're so far away from the capital, it's taking time uh, to assemble all of our troops. But we have most of them. So you don't really need to wait the additional 14 days, I think. Yeah, I don't think we're even assembling anything. Let's just go ahead and stop that. Uh, we got the hound pins. All right, excellent. All right, so we have very similar numbers. I don't know how good they are as a general. But yeah, if they had the defensive bonuses, then we are not in a good position to win this. So we really need them to attack us. And it looks like we might have difficulty doing that. Now we can go here, but they'll be the ones defending. It says we'll probably win, which is interesting. 
But that does not count the 868 right there, that's why. He's probably not moving on there yet. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the reason why we're going to win that. So we should probably just see if we can't get them to, to fight us before we go after the siege here. He's leading his own troops, so you know, if we capture him, then the war is over. And we've got enough money, you know, to pay for this war for quite some time. And so with this, it says we will win. Remember, we do have some defensive bonuses and stuff. I'm actually surprised that we'd win that because when you look at our, our culture bonuses, you know, we're getting increased levy size in a mountain province and increased supply limit. We also can build faster there. There's nothing really to indicate that we'd be better at that. Is it because I have one of those peasant commanders? It's got to be because i got a peasant commander here and rather than ourselves. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet, yeah, if you change him out, we're not going to win that anymore. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just because we have him with the uh, the unyielding defender increasing, uh, or excuse me, decreasing friendly fatal casualties. So that seems to be the thing that's making the difference here. So I guess we'll leave him in charge just so we can win this battle. Yeah, we'll go and fight there. And let's hope it's a win. I'm, I'm actually surprised that fighting in the mountains would be a win for us. Because again, we get mountain bonuses, but not like that. I mean, maybe it's wrong. Maybe we lose this battle. But it seems to be a loss here. It did say we would just probably win, though. Yeah, it does seem we're going to lose this battle. That's what I was thinking. Attacking in the mountains, that, that we wouldn't be able to, to win that. But it said probably, so I wanted to try it out. Uh, it looks like our ally is going to be here in a uh, short minute here. And our heir was taken hostage. Okay, so that's not good. Not only that, but he was disfigured. Decreasing his diplomacy, fertility, and attraction opinion. So that's unfortunate, because it wasn't very good to begin with. Now, he's not our main heir, uh, but he has set to inherit some, some territory. If he died, it'd actually be in our best interest, but uh, you know, our character would be devastated if he lost his son. All right, so he was injured and disfigured. Now he has to wear a mask. And uh, he was also captured, of course. And so that's given him a little bit of war score. All right, so those are unfortunate. But yeah, I was thinking that would be the case. I was thinking that was kind of off. That didn't seem like uh, we should be able to win that conflict. All right, so we're retreating all the way over here. So that's going to take some time. Uh, let's go and speed this up. And then we'll come back. Uh, we have our allies here to assist us. And let's go ahead and get something else here. I suppose we can do this one, hit and run. Though, yeah, I guess that'll give us some bonuses. So supply capacity is probably fine. A men in arms counter is, is nice as well. But we'll do this one. So let's take him, well, we gotta wait till he finished retreating. But we're gonna take him out of charge and put ourselves in, in place. And then march on back over there, which is obviously gonna take some time. Uh, you can see his troops were not engaged. Instead, our ally decided to focus on the siege, which I'm absolutely fine with, because you win that, you start getting the ticking war score, which is what we need here. All right, so yeah, this time, let's go with our gut and know that you can't typically win in the mountains. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so now we're attacking him here. I was letting it go too fast, uh, which it says again that chances are even uh, because this is our location, so we're the ones defending. But he does outnumber us. But we'll get our allies over here. Will they arrive in time, though? I guess is the real question. Because I don't know that we'll be able to win this without their assistance. They might get there. It looks like they just did. They they barely saved us from losing this this battle, which meant another defeat. So that gets us into the positive for the war score. We're at 2% now. Alright, so he's probably retreating. He could be retreating up to the mountains there. So we don't want to follow him up that way. Do we want to start on the siege? Or do we want to let our ally do that? Well, it looks like we could get there first. We don't need all of our troops there. So hopefully he'll go off and do something else. Yeah, so he's going to go off and do another siege or whatever. We'll do the siege of the, the capital here. His troops will likely march back over to our territory. And I expect our ally will chase him down. Uh, we did receive a gift. Because this character is generous. This is our steward. He gave us 150 gold. Yeah, we'll accept his gift. Uh, we're, not, we're not a prideful person. 
There's no reason why we wouldn't accept that. So that's awesome. That'd be helpful for the money we need to raise in order to actually create the kingdom. Uh, just taking the county will not be enough. Uh, we'll also have to, you know, pay the 500 gold. Uh, now we need a second duchy title too, so that means we also need to create this title. Which we can already do. So that's 750 gold total that we're going to need. So that's a big question on if we can raise that in time. I don't know. I guess it depends on how expensive this war is. How much money we get from the siege. Alright, so they won that battle up there. And we captured an important prisoner. So we're at 65%. And uh, we also finished up the, the siege here. Uh, that's probably where we got the prisoner from. He's uh, not doing so well now. Uh, but I think we're going to focus on doing uh, sieges. Maybe go... Yeah, they're both the same size, so it doesn't really matter which one we do. I guess the terrain matters. Here's hills, so he'd get the terrain bonus if he attacked us. We'll go after this one next. Just focus on the sieges. That's how we're going to finish this up, uh, because I don't think there's enough war score available for battles to actually win it. There's 21% left, so even if you were to continue winning battles, that would not be enough. Uh, we could go ahead and engage him here, but we don't have that great of a chance of winning. This is army commanders, superior to ours. We have the more soldiers. But again, you're not going to win from the battles alone. And it looks like the Duke died. He died from his internal injuries. So now his son has taken over as the Duke of Barcelona. I wonder if he was the commander here. Because I thought I saw that he was the commander. So that would probably result in us now winning. Maybe not. Didn't change anything. Alright, so we'll just let him march off and let our allies get that additional 21% here. And they can work us on the they can work on the siege here, but will they finish it in time? They would. So our allies have to defeat him. Uh, which they're also working on a siege over here. But yeah, we gotta win here. And it looks like we would win this battle. And so that'll probably get the maximum amount, which I forgot we can actually do it at 90 90% now. How long until the siege is done? Three months. I don't think it's worth waiting. So I don't think we'll finish the siege. Let's just go and end the war, guys. He has no choice but to accept it. So I don't think we have to wait for his actual acceptance here now. There we go. Alright, so we've taken over Barcelona. Renamed it. Let's go and disband our troops. And so with that, you know, we're way over our limits here. Which I suppose that's hurting our, our income. So we might want to to give that out. Could just give it to him. Oh, he's recently tortured. That's how he probably got disfigured. So he captured him and then like immediately tortured him. That's a major penalty to his health, but he's still fine. He's only 32 years old. He's not, not an old guy. Yeah, this is two separate uh, locations here. So yeah, causing us some problems, guys. Uh, what is he currently set to inherit? Is it still the same stuff? Yeah, still the same stuff here. So yeah, he would get these two right here, which is not what we want him to get. So we're going to grant him this one. I, although I don't know that I can stop him from getting... Yeah, you know what? We might not be able to stop him from getting this uh, duchy here, since it will be created for him. So we should probably just give titles to our eldest son in that case then. But what I was going to do is give these two to him. Uh, Barcelona, I kind of want to keep that in our own hands. So we should probably grant this one over to our, our son. So you could grant these three to our eldest son. I think that's what we're going to do. So grant him those two. So that'll get rid of a lot of them, but not all of them. So we're still, still have one too many. So we have a few different choices here. We could go ahead and create the title. I mean, we have to create the title. Might as well do that now, I suppose. Because you need to have the second title in order to uh, create the kingdom title here. So we have everything we need now. The counties, the two duchy titles. Now we just need the 500 gold. So about 400, 400 something more gold here. And then we'll, we'll be able to create the, the kingdom of uh, Aragon title and that will ensure that we can have a, a duke without them uh, you know needing to be completely free from us and so we're kind of limited until then 
and what all we can do here. Now we're only one above on the holding limit, so I think we're just gonna hold on to it for now. Because you could grant this to our other son. Problem with doing that though. Yeah, I really don't want to do that. Because then if he does inherit all this, then we're just giving it another county that he wasn't gonna inherit in the first place. For a total of what would that be like? Six counties? Yeah. He'd be very powerful. He'd be as powerful as our uh our eldest son. So that could cause us some serious issues, even if he's the king. So I think we're just going to hold on to it. It does grant a penalty, of course. Uh, so, you know, get a little opinion penalty, and the taxes and levies are less by uh, 20%. I think we're going to hold on to it until we create this kingdom title. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to wait for a little while. Uh, and also, we can ransom off all these characters. So he's attempting to ransom... Uh, this is the, the Duke of, of Barcelona. He's attempting to ransom off this character here. And I don't see any reason to, to keep him. So yeah, we'll take the 10 gold. And we need to get... Oh, wait a minute. That was a ransom offer for our brother-in-law. So I was just reading that wrong. But, you know, we probably wanted to ransom our daughter's husband. That makes sense that we'd ransom him off uh, to get him back. So we have this character here. And we could ransom her off for 10 gold, but he's a little bit short. So just wait till he gets it. And then we got this character here. The Duke would not be willing to ransom him. He's a renowned physician. He'd actually be a better doctor than our current doctor. So you know what? I think we're going to go ahead and hire him. And while we typically don't demand conversion, I would think that you'd probably want... I don't know if we did this with our current doctor. Uh, but yeah, I would assume that you'd probably want your doctor to share your faith. Yeah, he's already a Muslim. And, and the reason why I said he's better is while they both have the renowned physician, his learning is higher. And that can be important. So you know what? I think... Uh, I think we'll force his, his conversion in this one occasion here. So demand his conversion and recruit him. We can also get a weak cook, but that's just further reducing his opinion here. So let's just do that. And then we'll hire him as the doctor and then her will wait until he gets the two gold. I know it's only two gold, but this will get our money back that we spent to, to ransom that one character. There we go, there's 10 gold. All right, excellent. All right, so this character is gonna be our new doctor. Uh, though, of course, this will irritate the current doctor. But what we'll do with him is probably make him the marshal, and that'll irritate the current marshal. Oh, uh, yeah, he's clearly a, a better choice as the doctor, I think. He's got good aptitude here. So let's go to replace him. Uh, now, doing this will cost us prestige. Huh, that's interesting. We're still going to do it, but yeah, it's going to cost us a bit of prestige doing that. And then uh, let's go ahead and make him the new marshal. Because, yeah, he would be much better at this. Of course, we're just pissing people off left and right. That's okay. We got a lot of places we need to increase control, so trying to speed that up some, I think that'd be helpful. Uh, also, only eight months left to convert our capital to our culture. Right, excellent. So is that all we need to do? We've handled all the, the prisoners. Yeah, we're waiting for the, the ransom offer to come back there. We're just going to hold on to this extra county for now, guys. Just because I don't want to grant it to our eldest son, I suppose, or our youngest son. I suppose I could grant one of these to our eldest son, like give this one to him, to get under it. But I think we're going to leave this as is. It's fine. Let me take the penalty. But yeah, can we get enough money to create the kingdom title before we die. You can see that we are, our health is poor, we are ailing, so there's, there's a high chance we won't earn the 500 gold here, guys. Yeah, I think there's a good chance we might uh, not accomplish this. And then it's a absolute disaster here, because then our son, our youngest son, will separate from the the rest of our territory here. He'll take all this with him. So that's uh, a lot of territory that we, we gained in wars, and uh, we lose it all. And I just don't think we're going to live long enough. Yeah, we're just too old. I mean, we're earning a lot more money now, so there is that. So maybe. Got the Scandalous Priest event again for our younger son. So I feel like we're just going to have to keep on doing this. 
But yeah, it's really hitting us hard here with the prestige and piety. In fact, we're now in the negative on the piety. Not a very pious character. Uh, so currently we're earning six gold per month. Okay, so yeah, we'd have to live quite a few years. Yeah, that's 72 gold per year. And so we'd have to live, is that like six years or something like that to get enough money? Six, maybe seven years? I just don't think we're gonna make it. So we need to find a way to get some funding here, guys. Uh, this is our spouse being up to the task. Is there any money involved in here? Uh, probably not. It looks like this is something else. Oh yeah, we've seen this event many times. This is just her uh, improving our uh, different counselors. And so she can help our chancellor improve his diplomacy and learning, spy master improve his intrigue, Yusef can let learning, which I think makes sense that we do that since he's our son. And not everybody's happy with it too. Many of these people are insulted when you do that. Or you can instead just lay with her and, and increase her opinion. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have uh, her work with our son and improve his learning, which of course will help us with the uh, conversions. We're sitting at uh, five years to complete the conversion over here. Also, we just finished converting our capital to our culture. All right, excellent. So that's very nice. That's gonna help with the opinion problems because it's both our culture and our faith now. So the Yemeni culture is spreading. Uh, so I think that's the first one we have here. All right, excellent. Uh, we could take a look, but yeah, I don't think there's any other ones that have been converted to Yemeni just yet. So yeah, it's the only Yemeni province here in Iberia. So now we need to work on another location so we're going to promote culture probably over here. Now, I'm a little worried that our son is going to change his own culture up. Probably not. But we saw that our brother did that. But he's, he's dead now. But he had changed his culture to, to Catalan. And so I'm a little worried that our sons will, will change their culture, which I don't want them to do. Hopefully they don't. I'm not sure what controls when the AI does or, or doesn't do that. So this is Count Anso's friendship. I never expected I would grow as close to Count Anso as I have done in the past few years. On multiple occasions, he has proven himself to be a reliable and forthright man with only my best interest at heart. And he's the Count over here. So he is gay, but he's ugly and one-eyed. But he's not looking to be lovers. We're just... uh becoming friends there. So it's so rare to find a true friend. We'll go with that option. And so I think that's the, the first friend relationship we've had so far. I uh, another faction created against us. That's just that Aragonese Catholic populace faction. Uh, currently we're sitting at, uh, yeah, there are no concerns right now with the, with the uh, populace factions. Good to go. Yeah, I just don't know that we're gonna be able to earn the money in time, guys, unless we can get an event that, uh, Gives us some money. That's really the only way. Yeah, there's nothing really here that's going to help with money. So I don't know if you guys know any other options. I can't think of anything that we could do to, to get money, though. Warfare might earn us money. Might actually cost us money, though. It's hard to say. Uh, let's go for the envelopment next. So we are now in 1082, and unfortunately we're going to have to end the episode here. Again, need that 500 gold in order to create this kingdom so our uh, realm doesn't split. But yeah, I just don't know if we're going to make it, uh, because yeah, we still need a lot more. And we're earning a little bit more, 6.3, so that's going to help. Honestly guys, I just don't think we're going to live long enough uh, to get this done. And we're, we're clearly going to outlive our son despite his issues. So yeah, this is gonna create a problem. Uh, now, there is the option of disinheriting him, but we can't do that either because we lack both the prestige, nowhere near enough prestige, and we also lack the renown, which, yeah, we're not gonna get there anytime soon either. So that's not even an option. You can't disinherit him. Uh, also, I don't typically use the disinherit that often in the, uh, the roleplay series. We use it sometimes. Uh, but not as often as we did like in that Polish series where we essentially disinherited every child that wasn't going to inherit everything. We kind of made sure that 
our main son got everything we wanted him to get. Uh, so we had a disin- we disinherited our children quite often, either through that option or through the church. Uh, but yeah, that's not really an option for us guys. In a, in a role play series, we can do it sometimes where it makes sense. Like perhaps if somebody's like completely incompetent, you might do that or just. I mean, I guess he's not all that great here. But yeah, if he's got like certain. Uh, traits that would indicate that he would not be a good ruler and on top of that you got a character who would care about that like a diligent character or something maybe uh, a diligent character with a lazy son might disinherit that son or something like that so when it makes sense we'll do it you know maybe your son converts you're a very zealous character and your your son is a different religion in which case you might disinherit him in that instance as well but it's got to make sense for a character to actually disinherit him which in this case I don't really know that it does and again, we don't really have that option available anyways. Uh, we don't have the, the prestige or the, the renown. So yeah, we might just end up losing all this, unfortunately. So we lose all this right up here, up along the edges. We'd keep this, and we'd keep the territory in, in Aragon we took. Uh, but that's it. So let's see what happens. I do expect that will be uh, the case, though. And maybe we'll have a war between brothers or something. Though I don't know if he would do that. Because he's a craven. He doesn't have to fight the war specifically, but would he challenge his brother? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. His brother's a, a warrior, while he is is not. So I don't know that he would challenge his brother. It's hard to say. I'd love to hear you guys' opinion on what we can do here. Uh, more than likely, I think we will lose this because we just won't get the money in time to create the, the Kingdom of Aragon. But if you've got any uh, suggestions, I'd love to hear them. I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you have a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.